you first know about the program, officially, I believe, called Fast and Furious? To the best of your knowledge, what date? I'm not sure of the exact date, but I probably heard about Fast and Furious for the first time over the last few weeks. Yeah, right. That was U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder being grilled at hearings about a secret U.S. government plan to get this. Send illegal American guns to Mexican drug gangs? I know it's crazy, but it's just one of a dozen weird scandals done by Obama's top law enforcer. Holder is the fifth longest serving attorney general in U.S. history. He wields power that affects the lives of every American. A new book gives us an inside look into the powerful Department of Justice under Eric Holder. In Obama's Enforcer, we discover how Holder bends and ignores the laws and tries to discredit conservatives, even targeting conservative journalists. One of the authors, John Fund, joins us now from New York. John, tell us a little bit about Eric Holder. He's been essentially Obama's right-hand man in the law. Where does he come from? What's he like? What's his background? Well, he had a stellar career uh, in his early life, rose to become U.S. attorney, the chief prosecutor for the District of Columbia and a judge. Uh, then he went, became the number two man in the Clinton Justice Department. And there, I think, uh, he became much more political. Um, he was involved in the Mark Rich pardon, which, as you know, Ezra, was an infamous pardon granted to someone who was an international fugitive from justice who had traded with Iran when U.S. hostages were being held there. He also was very active in the release of uh, 16 Puerto Rican terrorists, people who had been involved in 130 crimes, including six murders. Uh, they hadn't even requested a pardon, but Holder engineered a pardon for them, and they apparently were, this, this was done for political reasons because Hillary Clinton was running for the pre Senate in New York in 2000, uh, where there was a large Puerto Rican community. He became involved with Barack Obama after Obama's election to the Senate. They clicked. They clearly were of like mind. And ever since then, Holder has his, been his political wingman. Now, an attorney general has to follow the enforcement priorities of his president, but he also has to uphold the rule of law. And too many times when there's been a fork in the road and he has to choose between the rule of law and politics, Holder has unfortunately chosen politics. Oh, you're so right here. Let me quote from your book. I, I think this uh, will give us an example of this for our our readers who are our viewers who are curious holder is the first attorney general in history to be held in contempt by the house of representatives for his unjustified refusal to turn over documents related to what may be the most reckless law enforcement operation of the justice department ever conducted operation fast and furious he has launched more investigations and prosecutions of leaks than any prior attorney general yet he has studiously ignored high level friendly leaks by White House officials in the Obama administration. So I think this gives a bit of a flavor. This is from your book, Obama's Enforcer, that he, you know, he goes after political enemies using the law. He brings the law to, in a way, criminalize politics, the leaks that you were referring to, but he does not abide the law by giving Congress what, what they legally demand. Well, the Fast and Furious scandal is the most unfortunate because we still haven't gotten to the bottom of it, even though it led to the death of a U.S. border agent, and it also led to the death of hundreds of Mexican civilians. Uh, Holder has refused to turn over key documents in that case. Uh, the internal investigation of justice has apparently gone nowhere. Uh, we know that there is something in those documents because we do now have the index uh, describing what the subject matter is, and it's clearly relevant to what Congress's oversight capability is looking for. So Holder was held in contempt of Congress. His own inspector general, who is an Obama appointee, signed a letter last week complaining that he has been stonewalled on separate investigations that he has conducted into the Justice Department. And he's the man in charge of being the Justice Department's own watchdog, and he's complaining. Now, uh, even more recently, like literally in the last few days, that there's been riots in uh, Missouri with a bit of a racial overtone. Uh, Holder's office made some statements about the bravery of journalists who were going to confront the police and who were arrested. I sense that Holder, you say he and Obama are cut from the same cloth. I sense they're both deeply radical. I mean, you, uh, but can that coexist with a man who was a judge, a U.S. attorney, a man of the establishment? Is there such a thing as an establishment radical? At, at his root, does Eric Holder want to change America, or does he want to strengthen America? Well, I'll just give you one example. Uh, he recently gave a talk at Columbia University in which he was asked about affirmative action, quotas, 
uh, racial quotas. And he was asked, do you see a day when affirmative action is going to no longer be necessary? As Sandra Day O'Connor, the Supreme Court Justice who lost upheld affirmative action said. And he said, no, uh, I don't ask when affirmative action will end. I ask, when will it ever begin? And he said, we're going to have to have this forever. Well, this is not the colorblind society envisioned in our Constitution after the Civil War or by Martin Luther King himself, who spoke to a society in which we look to the content of our character, not the color of our skin. Well, I mean, when Obama was campaigning, he said, we're not Democrats or Republicans, we're black or white, we're just all Americans. I think he, Obama pa passed himself off as a post-racial president, but he, he seems to focus not just on race divide, but on class divide. Has Eric Holder used the, the law to go after uh, corporate enemies of Obama? Has he been uh, a tough guy on those files, too? Well, yes, the Justice Department has enormous discretionary power. They often go to companies and say, you seem to be in some legal trouble here, or we could find some legal trouble. They force out-of-court settlements. I call them green mail, usually in environmental cases, in which the company, basically, to avoid bad publicity, settles. The Justice Department gets some money, and they ask you for it to be transferred to the National League Resources Defense Council or the Sierra Club or some other left-wing advocacy group. They literally uh, shake down. So the government, Eric Holder, the Department of Justice boss, the Attorney General, shakes down a company, and the money doesn't go to the government, it goes to one of these left-wing lobby groups? Is that how it yes. works? That's incredible. Yes, Saul Alinsky, Saul Alinsky would be proud. Huh, that's amazing. John Fun, the book is called Obama's Enforcer. It's great to have you on the show. Hope to have you on again soon to talk about so many things. Folks, you can get the book on Amazon.